So I just finished up my video on uh, FlexPlay DVDs and plastic and like how we imagine waste and how this is a good sort of lens through which to understand that we don't understand it that well. And the big reason we don't understand it that well ultimately is that it's super like to actually understand it accurately is very complicated. And so we're relying on things like is this thing valuable? to decide whether or not it's okay to throw it away. And if it's something that we're used to paying $20 for, we feel very weird. If it's something that we don't even imagine we're buying, then we don't feel weird about it. Like, I didn't buy this bottle. I bought Sprite. I didn't buy this, like, stuff that was inflated with air to keep my Metamucil safe. I bought Metamucil. Those things are just packaging. To actually imagine this accurately is impossible, to be clear, like, to actually, like, understand all the different like, opportunity costs and costs and, like, all of the human labor and the, like, uh, what is that worth? And the different places and, like, pumping water out of the ground and different kinds of plastics coming from all over the world. But you can do a better job of understanding it pretty easily. And there's two, here are the, the two things when it comes to, like, what is the importance of this package? First, it's where it came from, and second, it's where it is, it's going. And then the other, it, like, important thing to recognize is, like, how is this treated on average by society? So I'm going to recycle this bottle, but not everyone is. I don't know how many people are, but my guess is that most of them are gonna end up in the landfill. And so we have to consider not just how I'm going to behave and like my individual footprint, but as a society when we're making decisions collectively through government usually, but also through collective action and like calling Michael Eisner on the phone and being like, don't use, DVD, uh, like flex play DVDs, then like we have to imagine like what everyone on average is doing. The, as far as like where this thing came from, I think one, it's really important to recognize that like the, the DVD that I was talking about, like it contains multiple different materials and that makes it harder to recycle. So the materials contained in this DVD, you have the label, which is like printed and like adhered to it. That is one kind of material, um, which you generally, with a, a label, especially like this kind of label, you're expecting just to be vaporized in the recycling process. You have one type of plastic on the top, which is a softer, cheaper plastic. You have a harder plastic, which is polycarbonate on the bottom, and then sandwiched between those two plastics, you have uh, some kind of metal foil that's mostly aluminum with a couple of like atoms of other stuff in there to obviously more than a couple of atoms, but like uh, to very small trace amounts of other uh, elements to make it function as a DVD. I don't understand how DVDs work, but some people do. You have this, which doesn't have any metal, but it does have four different kinds of plastic in it. Can you count them? You're probably seeing three of them. Uh, one is the bottle, and that is the vast majority of the plastic and which makes it easier to recycle, because like that's what you're recycling when you recycle a bottle, is mostly this. There's also the plastic label, um, or whatever. I think it's, I think it's a, plastic in that it is a uh, polymer of carbon, like an organic polymer. Uh, then you have the cap. And so an, an annoying thing about caps is that in the US at least, we have these tamper evident caps where there's this, I don't know if you've ever wondered why this little thing stays on. It's because before the bottle was opened, you can check to see if this has been opened and someone has like poured a bunch of LSD in it or something. Once you've opened the bottle, that is broken and you cannot redo it. So that's a required by law thing, but it's really annoying for recycling because it stays on and you can't like, it's not like you could pay a worker to like yank these things off. It takes forever. So you have to do it through like other means. You want the same kind of plastic being recycled with the same kind of plastic or else it ends up uh, becoming a lower quality plastic. And also like it's worth noting that like, Freaking green, freaking clear, that's terrible. Like, you shouldn't do that. We should, this, as far as I'm concerned, green plastic should be illegal because there's no reason that it should exist. It's just like a way of Sprite making people think, ah, oh, Sprite, it's that color. Um, and it just makes it harder for things to get recycled and like makes it harder to make clear plastic from the recycling stream. Um, and then the fourth plastic that you probably didn't spot is the is the plastic that's on the inside of the cap, which makes caps extra hard. Um, there's a like a sort of a softer plastic in there that helps keep an airtight seal. I just dropped it on the ground. So that's four different types of plastic in these bottles, which we use at a rate of like 25 million a day or something, or an hour. It's ridiculous. We use so many goddamn bottles. So that's the thing to keep in mind when it's headed off to the recycling plant. 
The next question that you gotta ask yourself is why are we recycling this? So the first thing that like I was sort of ingrained with as a child was that like there's just too much trash in the world and we need to stop that. That's not actually like a legitimate argument. So at, like take a really dumb example. What if I like throw a rock in my trash, the impact of that like extra trash is just uh, just putting it into a truck and driving it away, and there is a carbon cost associated with that. I'm not saying there isn't, but like once it arrives at the landfill, like the world is made of stuff, and landfills are made of stuff, and like I'm not extra concerned about the fact that we have like a big hill in every town that's made out of trash. What I am concerned about is are there things going into that trash that can have negative impacts on human life, other life? Um, and so for example, this is basically a rock. Like it is inert, it's not going to leach anything into the groundwater. Aluminum is extremely stable once it oxidizes and this is oxidized aluminum and it's just not gonna, it's not gonna go anywhere. Like throwing away this or throwing away a glass bottle is like throwing away a rock. I don't care that like, a, like that stuff ends up in landfills. Is slightly more concerned with plastic, which can degrade over time and leach biologically active chemicals into groundwater. Um, and also, I'll say that the polycarbonate in DVDs has more stuff that you should be concerned about um, in terms of when it breaks down. But like, it's a, obviously a very small amount of the trash. Like the vast majority of plastic trash is this shit in, in like plastic bags. The reason to recycle isn't so much to like keep these things out of the landfill. It's that we've already done a lot of the work necessary to turn this into the next thing. So turning like fossil fuels into plastic is fairly resource intensive. P turning this into another Sprite bottle, like a completely different sp Sprite bottle, like shredding it to pieces, melting it down, making another Sprite bottle is much more efficient than uh, making another Sprite bottle from, from scratch. So that's the actual reason why we don't want this in the landfill, because it's more carbon efficient to make another bottle out of this. And that is extra true of aluminum, which is actually very easy to recycle. And it is not really true of glass, which is hard to recycle because it has so much thermal mass, like glass is heavy and so it's hard to melt. So glass is very good for reuse. It's not very good for recycling. It's very good for throwing away because it's just a rock. Like functionally, it's a rock. Anytime recycling or Throwing away glass is a bad idea. The only thing to, that's good to do with glass is reuse it, and we don't do that in America. So glass is actually, as far as I'm concerned, a crap product. But that's one of my hot takes that uh, many people will go to the mat for. Uh, and I kind of hate that like premium products are put in glass. That seems ludicrous to me. Like when I go to the health food store, like all of the fancy beverages, all of the juices, all of the like peanut butter is in glass. And I'm just like, you guys, this is a worse product. That to me is just about like people's connection to the past and like that there's value and it feels sturdy and it's like, and plastic is like evil and fossil fuels and stuff. This is a thing that frustrates me. Glass is not good for the environment. It, it is very diff, it is impossible. It's so hard to recycle and we never reuse it. If we, if you reuse it, 100%, glass all the way. So that's sort of like the after use thing. And the reason why we recycle is because it comes back into the p before use, where it's like, okay, we have this thing sort of halfway made already. And it's so true of aluminum, which is very difficult to get out of the ground. But once you have it, very easy to turn into other aluminum products because it's just an element. There's nothing else in here. You, the label vaporizes and you've just got metal. But a really important thing to remember with all of this is that packaging is just one small part of the environmental footprint of a product. You have uh, the thing that goes in it, of course, which in the case of Sprite or Coca-Cola is actually more carbon intensive, like worse for the environment than the thing it goes inside of. And I know that like that's the actual thing that's providing us value. So like that's not as much of a concern, but it is something to think about at least. And then you have the getting it to you, which also turns out to be a really big part of the environmental footprint, often more than the packaging, because like water is heavy and getting it from one place to another requires work to be done, requires energy and fuel. And that is like the, the syrup coming from the place where the syrup is manufactured to the bottling plant. And then from the bottling plant, when you actually have all the water in it, then you're getting that to the store. And then I'm going to the store to go get it. All of that adds up. 
um, and is a is a big environmental cost that we don't tend to think of. Uh, this is also true for DVDs. The majority of like a packaged DVD in a case because it takes up much more space than a DVD like on a spindle um, is like because and especially uh, it comes from China. That is the majority of the impact of a packaged DVD is just transporting it around the world. Uh, because it takes up so much space, and it didn't have to take up space, and that's actually something that's interesting about Flexplay, like, this takes up so much less space than this. Like, you could probably fit maybe eight, like, five to eight of these in the same space, maybe ten as this clue box. And of course, paper products are much easier to recycle and less resource-intensive than plastic products. Especially when you're talking about the thickness of a DVD case, which is actually pretty thick, because they want you to think that it's valuable. So that's the part where we're sort of talking about what, like, our own personal choices, um, and should I recycle and why I recycle, and like, yes, it's very good to recycle, but that's mostly because you are preventing the need to create more plastic, not because you're, like, keeping something out of a landfill. The other piece is, like, on average, all of society's behavior, because you can't expect everyone to recycle. And in fact, like, it is a actual burden. Like, it does take time. It's labor that we do um, as human beings, and we do it for our waste management companies for free. And we do that in order, like, for societal benefit. I'm not saying it's a bad thing to do. I'm not saying that waste management companies should do it for us. I'm just saying that that's the situation. And we're, you know, we're doing labor for free because we want to help the world. Not everybody has like the time or the energy or like the values, understanding of the world to do that labor. And so the, a lot of stuff doesn't get recycled. And that's when it comes down to like, sometimes we can say like, well, it's okay to have plastic bottles because, because like I'm going to recycle this. But like, that's ultimately not the thing. The thing is some portion of these are going to get recycled. What is that number? How can we have that number be 100%? That's the sort of valuable conversation to have, because instead of, like, these companies putting the labor on us and saying, like, please recycle, which it says on here somewhere, I'm sure, you have to have systems to get these valuable products. These are not worth nothing. These are worth money. They were created by companies. They were, like, they're not... Like, in, in my head, I see this as zero value, but this is not worthless. It's worth, you know, it probably costs like five cents to make one of these. And that's like, that's a part of the cost of the beverage, and we don't imagine that. And there are ways to make it easier to recycle this stuff. And the main thing that like, we you know, like, you don't think about until you get into the weeds is shit like this. Like, green bottle bad, okay? like. Like, things like designing bottles so that this little ring is easy to get off so that they don't end up in the same, uh, like, chipper and then, like, like wood chipper, plastic chipper, and then this little guy goes into the plastic stream and, like, the next generation of plastics is lower quality and you have to put more, uh, like, new plastic in to, to like make up for that. You could also require a standard size bottle. So like all these cute little divots and stuff, each one of those increases the amount of plastic that is required for this bottle. You can also require thinner plastic and say nobody is allowed to have big bulky caps. Nobody is allowed to have these thick, thick bottles that we don't need. We're gonna like say as a culture, like everybody's gotta use the same bottle and like, oh no, are you gonna be worse at marketing your your like d sugar water that's bad for people? Oh, that's terrible. Like, like a sugar tax is one thing, saying like, we're gonna tax people for buying sugar, but like, no, just make it, it's gonna make it cheaper for the, for the companies to make the thing, but it's gonna be harder for them to market it. Like that to me is like a no brainer. Like this is, like this should be illegal. This like super sturdy plastic with lots of bumps. All, the only thing those bumps do is make it so that there's more fucking plastic in this bottle. There are things that we can do, things we can regulate to have there be less plastic in an average bottle and to have each bottle be easier and more economically efficient to recycle. Those are the things that there should be rules about, but nobody knows about this shit because it's like way in the weeds and Coca-Cola wants to be able to like have a fancy bumpy bottle that makes you think that it's a premium product. I don't need Coca-Cola's design people to have this much flexibility. I'm sorry. Like, it's fine. Your bottles are gonna look like other people's bottles. Compete on the product, not on the bottle.